So hello and welcome back to my first YouTube video in over four years. Now I know a lot of you have been very disappointed in me and my inactivity on YouTube, uh, but I said I'd have to prioritize other funnels, other social medias like Instagram and TikTok, and then from there bring all of you over to longer form content so you can get to know me a little bit better. This YouTube video is gonna be a little bit different to ones you can expect to see from me in the future. So for those of you who don't currently follow me on Instagram or on TikTok, you might not be aware, but I've a pretty fucking shit hairline. So while it might look okay when it's sitting and it's styled, I put a lot of effort into this every morning to make sure that I don't look half bald when I'm walking out the door in the morning. So if you peel back my hair, which I've done to many people up until now, the reaction is always the same. They think that in the beginning that I'm absolutely crazy to be going off to Turkey tomorrow to get a hairline, but then the further my hand progresses back my head, the more they start to realize that, you know, maybe I'm not so crazy. So for me, I know that this is an issue that a lot of young fellas, obviously in particular, suffer with. Uh, and for many men, their hair is, is a massive part of their overall body image. So what I want to do by bringing you along this journey and being as open and transparent about my transplant as possible is to help reduce the stigma with it so that more of you who might be in a similar situation don't feel so pressured into not getting one done. The thing about it is, is a couple of years ago, I had absolutely rotten teeth. They were all over the shop. They looked like shark teeth on the bottom. I went and I got a set of braces for 10 months. 10 months later, my teeth were perfect. So to me, there's not much difference between someone going into a dentist, getting braces, getting composite bonding done to make their smile look better. There's not much difference between that and going to Turkey or going to Dublin, wherever you prefer, to make your hairline look better because both are massive parts of people's image. So this is what I hope to do with this video. So my story personally stemmed back to when I was very young. So the men in my family didn't have the best hairlines. My father had massive head of hair when he was in his 20s, but very quickly did that start to recede. So I kind of knew that I was in for, for the same fate from the very beginning. When I was younger, when, let's say, I was approaching a friend of the family, they used to think that I was a bald child or that I was going through chemo because the areas where I'm now receding in, so here and here, there was baby hairs there that used to bleach. So obviously I was always destined for baldness from a very young age. And it's funny when I think back on when people will comment on my TikToks, on my Instagrams, accusing me of obviously having the shit hairline that I do, I was somewhat in denial about it, kind of saying, oh, I've always had this hairline, I was born with this. In many respects I was, but it's definitely over the last number of years gotten progressively worse. So throughout school, my hair wasn't much of an issue for me. I could put gel in it, I could get Vs, I could get whatever kind of haircut that I wanted and it looked reasonably well. It was only through college that I started to become much more self-conscious about my hairline. And I remember distinctly going from lecture to lecture, walking outside, for the five minutes that I'd be walking out in the open air, in front of everyone else, my, the wind used to catch my hair and just completely part it, completely peel the hair off, off my head. So because of that, I used to rob my sister's hairspray bottles and absolutely drown my hair in hairspray to the point that it was thick, it was crusty, and it just stuck to my head so that even if there was a gale force wind, my hair wasn't moving off my head. I think for me, that was kind of very, very sad that I was so crippled with insecurity surrounding something that now I know is, is fixable. The turning point for me, so a hair transplant was something that I always considered for so long that I th half thought about but never had the balls to actually take the plunge and do. But when I was filming a video running out of the Enzo's chipper here in William Street, I think it's fucking William Street, uh, I had to take multiple retakes because every time I'd run out of the chipper, the wind would catch my hair and make it look like I had a fucking toupee on my head. So from that point, looking back on those clips, I decided, you know what? I'm sick to the teeth of going around worrying about the next gust of wind that's going to completely peel the hair off my head. And I immediately booked in with a company called Now Hair Time upon seeing an unreal transformation from someone, someone with a very similar hairline to me. Back the house when you're leaving. Okay. So for me, a lot of the question that a lot of people ask and something that stops you from kind of going and taking the plunge to get a hair transplant, if that's something that you wish to do, is the fact that, you know, you need to do your research, you need to know what you're getting yourself in for. And there's always a risk element associated with obviously a procedure like this. But for me, I could do all the research in the world, but at the end of the day, I'm not an expert in hair transplants, so I don't really know what I'm looking for. 
So I'm, I'm placing a lot of trust, I suppose, in the turkey companies that they know what they're doing. And I assume that they do. 15 years ago, it might have been a different story when the technology wasn't as new, when they hadn't gone through as many patients or hair transplants weren't as much of a thing. I think you probably were at much more of a risk of getting a botch job done than you are 10, 15 years later. Uh, for me, obviously, the risk is always there. But the biggest relief that I felt was having handed over my money to the company, knowing that I was booked in to get this sorted. Because a lot of people with something like this will spend a lot, lot of time analyzing that they actually end up making no decision. And it's five years later and they're yet to sort out something that's been bothering them for all this time. So hopefully this goes well and I don't end up jinxing uh, my look over the next couple of days. But I'll be sure to bring you along for the journey with me, run you through the pros, the cons, my thoughts, my concerns, and ultimately the process itself so you have a better idea of what to expect if you too are looking to book in for a hair transplant. So make sure that you subscribe to see all the updates and see how I get on over the next couple of days.